Hello everybody and welcome back to my house renovation project. Yeah, and so today we have the third episode of our restoration and as I mentioned already in the last video today we will do some serious excavation stuff. <laughs> so uh, here we have it, my small little fellow, my Kubota K008 and with the help of my Kubota and with my track dumper Today we will start off excavating all the earth out of the building. So as you might can imagine this will be a little bigger job to do. And um, yeah, so at that point I would say sit back and enjoy the video. Yeah, and after I had already shown you in the last video how quickly you can demolish your house with such a mini excavator, especially in narrow spaces and if you're not really trained with such a machine, I now continue in the hallway. I definitely have a lot more space to work here and the risk of collateral damage is correspondingly much lower of course. But I can tell you uh, that such a mini excavator is a real relief. I am now starting to excavate the large area in the hallway and despite the fact that I still have little experience with such an excavator, I am definitely making good progress here. But it is not only the mini excavator, eh? you don't have to forget the track dumper. This is also a really huge help, uh, it has a capacity of around 500 liters and is powered by a petrol engine with about 6 horsepower. And as you can see very nicely here, I also have to move the earth a large distance over the entire property. And before I bought this track dumper, of course I needed also to do this by hand, yeah, with a wheelbarrow, <laughs> a little bit old school. And this is also why the track dumper is such a big support, yeah, and in uh, combination with the mini excavator, uh, I call them definitely a dream team. Okay, then let's drive back again into the house. And as you can see here, the track dumper is also not so small, so you also need to be careful if you drive through narrow spaces like uh, the door you just seen. It slightly fits through, but you need to be careful uh, to not produce some more collateral damage. Okay, then we are back at the building site. So let's switch machines from the track dumper back to the mini excavator, keep the camera on the head and start digging again. <laughs> And here is another interesting fact that you should consider at this point. So I can do all the work by myself and yes, a second man wouldn't really help. Yeah? Because as long as I'm working with the mini excavator, the track dumper stands still anyway. Yeah? Because it has to wait until the trough is full. And when somebody then is uh, on the way with the track dumper, uh, yeah, the maybe other guy cannot do anything with the excavator anymore because you have nothing to unload your bucket, yes? <laughs> so this is why I think it's definitely the perfect team for a one-man show like me here in this house at the moment um, to do such a work. So as I already mentioned before, there is uh, in total a lot of earth to be excavated here. Yeah, yeah, only this room here in which I'm just working in, uh, this room has around 35 square meters and I need to dig 60 centimeters deep and this is about 21 cubic meters of earth, yeah, which needs to be, be uh, digged and moved out of the building and yeah, move to the other side of the property yeah, also. So um, what I said in the last video, this is really much work if you try to do this uh, with your hands. And this is why I bought this perfect team of machines. And as you can see, I now move with the dumper in the other direction out of the building. So I built a small ramp here to have the possibility to use is the other exit and here this ramp I also built in the last video. Yeah, So this definitely shortens up the way a little bit and this here sometimes I think it looked like a, a pet cemetery or something like that. But this is not everything. So as I just mentioned, 21 cubic meters are still to come only from this one room. 
So even with both machines, it took me more than one week, more or less full time, to excavate all of the earth out of this room. Yeah, so this was really a big bunch of work and I, I cannot imagine if I really had tried it by hand. Yeah, I definitely think I would have been desperate in that case. Yeah, and here you can see the maybe best investment in machines I ever did during our house restoration project. A mini excavator from Kubota, Kubota K008. It has around 900 kilograms and enough power to work and uh, especially in those small and, and narrow areas, yeah, it's absolutely perfect to work here. And um, in the combination with the track dumper, this is a perfect team. You can do everything with them together. And uh, yeah, as I said, it did so many work for me much, much easier. And this would be the first thing I would say to everybody who tries such a project on his own, buy yourself a mini excavator. <laughs> Yeah, and because I unfortunately didn't have a camera running all the time, so at that time there are now a few pictures again. So as you can see, I excavated the rest of the room and exposed also the area in the direction of the stairwell accordingly. The next task was the completion of the third part of the floor slab. And for this, first of all, the gravel had to be transported into the house. And this, of course, <laughs> was again done by the track dumper and the mini excavator. And here you can see the result. So this is the form work for the next floor slab part. And uh, yeah, here it is filled with concrete. And now this one connects the two other parts. For a better understanding of the uh, yeah, separate parts of the floor slab, I can show you again the ground plan. So here in red, you can see the first part we uh, created in the last video, also the second one in orange. These both are below the timber frame. And then in blue, we have the one we built today in this video. This is a connection between both. And then in the next, there comes the green one. This is then the connection of everything to build one big floor slab out of all three or four parts. Yeah, and then in the meantime, we had some rain and also a little bit more water inside the house. So um, yeah, we need to dry it a little bit with the help of a pump and so on. And then we can move on with the next part. This is the hallway directly. So also here, we had to move some tons of gravel into the house, of course, again, with the track dumper. This was also big help here in that case. And of course, you can see the excavator also. And maybe you recognize at that point that I got a little more practice with the excavator and now working slightly faster than at the beginning. But then somewhere in the beginning of March 2020, I again grabbed my camera and performed a small work, uh, yeah, walk through, yeah, through the building. And so here you can also see the water. It is still a little bit high inside the building, but you can also see the third part of the new floor slab is also ready. And so these three small parts of the floor slab, we, we mixed these by ourselves, so this was not a big deal. But the last, or now the next part here in the middle, this is about 30 square meters in size. And this is big enough to order a concrete truck. So let's move a little more through the entire ground floor. So from, from my point of view, it was... Uh, yeah, really satisfying to see now any progress. Yeah, so as I mentioned in the last video, there was a half year of work and hard work, but not really to see some progress. And now I'm I'm working three months with the uh, mini excavator, dumper, and other machines, and in three months. We moved so much earth out of the building. We moved, moved so much gravel inside the building. So there were several tons of material already moved. And so this was a quite impressive progress from my point of view. And so also see here's all, also everything wet at the moment, but this is not a real issue. This is where the gravel is for. Yeah, so that this uh, yeah, water under or below the house will be no issue anymore in the future. So here we can see the next rooms. 
Um, here I did not do so much, so this will come next after the hallway is ready. And here we come to the former kitchen where some oak beams are already waiting for us. Yeah, and as a little fun fact, by the way, you can see this pile of oak beams is still existing and uh, yeah, still waits for installation. Yeah, so some of the walls are actually missing, but the wood is here to stay. <laughs> So you need to know we bought uh, the oak wood directly from the sawmill. So it still has a relatively high residual moisture content and it is therefore not a really big problem if it is stored here for a while. <laughs> okay then this was it for the ground floor. I would say then we can move one or maybe the last time to the first, to the upper floor and see if we also have any progress in here. Yeah, so the upper floor I simply call the mineral wool hell. <laughs> so there definitely is uh, some mineral wool left, uh, but you can see not so much more. So I removed mostly everything of uh, wood planks from the wall, from the ceiling and of course from the floor. And there was some problem by exposing the construction in that way. So now we have all the opportunity to see all the further construction sins which were built here by the pre-owners and I simply say there are more than I can list here. Um, so there was something that we said, okay, um, let's move on with the ground floor and forget about the first floor. So we will then take care of it when it's time. So what you can see here actually is maybe not too bad, yeah. but on the other side there's a dormer and here you can see there's a rafter and this is one of three which were simply were cut off during the installation of this dormer and I think this was not really properly checked by the pre-owners in terms of static for example. Okay, that's uh, I think enough for today from the first floor. So let's move back to the ground floor again. And um, I think we can also take a short look at the outside of the building. So in the last month we also worked sometimes a little bit on the outside here and there. So uh, yeah, let's do a quick tour straight through the ground floor to the outside. Okay, here we are on the outside. First you can see on the one hand there is a tractor trailer from my father-in-law. On the other side there is some wood and yeah, you can see the sand we need for the mixing of the concrete. Also some gravel, so most of it is already inside the house. And of course a good old Deutz tractor from my father-in-law. Um, here, there, uh, a few months ago, there was a hedge. This hedge we already removed because it just got way too big and needed way too much attention and work. And this is not why I'm here. Yeah, I don't want to work on a hedge. I want to work on the house. Okay, as you see, not so much did happen in the last months on the outside, so I concentrated more on the inside. So let's go on with some yeah, progress on the inside. So um, as you just already seen in the video, we created the next part of the floor slab. This was a bigger one with 30 square meters and together with the already completed three parts, they now form a large big unit. Yeah. We now can start working rebuilding the walls as you can see here on the new floor slab and then we come to the most important parts of a half timbered house, new oak beams. Um, I picked them up uh, personally with my small car and a small trailer and transported them by myself to the building site so that the master carpenter gets enough material to work with. 
So first, uh, the master carpenter repaired some of the oak stands before finally the oak sill can be built underneath the complete wall. And here on the left side you can see the oak beam which will become the new sill beam of the framework. So the sill beam for a uh, better understanding is the last or the lowest horizontal oak beam in a half timbered house. And here you can see how it looks like directly after the installation. And yeah, this is uh, something we will do a little more often in the next month and years because there is still much to repair. Okay, everybody, that was it for today with our third episode of the house restoration project. So as you may have seen, there is still a lot of earth needs to be excavated out of the building. There needs to be a lot of gravel transported into the building. And of course, we need some concrete here and there. So still a lot of work to do. And um, yeah, there, there will we continue in the next episode. So thanks for watching and I hope I see you again in the next video. Bye bye, everybody.